I'm going to share with you two eerie stories told to me by real people living otherwise ordinary lives. The second story is so strange, it does not seem like it could be true, but I have an idea on what the creature could have been, but let me know if you have a better explanation. When Felicia was younger, she loved walking in the woods. Almost every morning, she would wander through the forest behind her house, enjoying the solitude without a care in the world. The woods felt endless, a vast, green escape that invited her to explore. One day, feeling particularly restless and full of energy, Felicia decided to venture farther than she ever had. She was determined to keep going, to immerse herself in the beauty and peace around her. After what seemed like ages of walking, she found herself at a clearing. In the center of it lay a large, rotted log. The place was mesmerizing. The forest floor looked oddly pristine, almost as if it had been vacuumed, giving the ground a soft, carpet-like look. Sunlight filtered perfectly through the treetops, casting a golden glow on everything. Drawn to the serene scene, Felicia sat down on the log, wanting to savor the beauty in front of her. At first, everything felt warm and comforting, almost like home, but there was something unsettling beneath it all, an edge to the calm that couldn't quite place. A faint, sinister undertone that sent a shiver through her. Maybe it was her imagination, or maybe it was her mind trying to warn her to leave this place. The sounds of the forest were soft and soothing, the gentle calls of birds and the whisper of wind through the leaves. Without warning, that peace evaporated. The sun dimmed as the clouds slid across the sky and a strange, heavy silence fell over the clearing. It was unnatural. All of the sounds of life had vanished. Felicia felt something shift, a sense of dread creeping over her, like every ounce of joy in the world had drained away. Her stomach twisted as fear took root. In the silence, she heard a branch snap. The sound came from up a hill, deep within the forest, and every nerve in her body tensed. It was as if whatever was out there knew she was there and knew she didn't belong. For a heartbeat, the forest held its breath. Then, in a blur of violent motion, whatever it was began to charge down the hill, crashing through the underbrush with an unnatural speed, a sound too furious and wild to be animal or human. And when she saw it, it was a creature beyond words, something twisted and wrong. Its body was warped, uneven, with skin stretched taut in places that didn't make sense, as though it had been put together incorrectly. There were no eyes or mouth, just sunken depressions in its face where they should have been. It moved on all fours, zigzagging as it ran, fast, unnervingly fast. Sharp bones jutted out from odd places on its frame, and, and every movement seemed to defy logic. Felicia turned and ran, not looking back. She ran as fast as she could, her heart pounding, every instinct screaming as she fled. The creature was gaining on her, tearing through the leaves with terrifying speed. She felt like prey, trapped in a maze. Just ahead, she spotted the road that would lead her home, and as she burst through the trees, a car passed by, not stopping, but startling her back to reality. She dared to look over her shoulder, just once, and saw the creature skittering back up the hill, its twisted body weaving in that same disturbing zigzag motion. She didn't stop running until she reached her front door, her legs trembling and bruised. She never went for another walk in those woods again, and even now, she still wonders what it was that she saw. She has no idea, and perhaps she never will. I think... This sounds like a chupacabra. It's a very commonly spoken about creature and has sightings all over North America. The dog-like features, strange erratic movement, and, and bony disheveled appearance matches many reports. Combined with the territorial behavior, it sounds like a good match to me. What do you think? Our next story is very different. The creature itself may not appear terrifying, but the behavior and circumstances around it is anything but normal. This happened when Jack was around 13 years old. He'd had several strange experiences in the house where it all took place, but this one haunted him the most. The day started out pretty normal. He'd woken up, gone to school, and played some video games before having dinner. His dad often worked late, so it was usually just him and his mom in the evenings. After dinner, they'd sit down together and watch TV, beginning with Wheel of Fortune and moving on to Jeopardy. That night, there was a light drizzle outside with the occasional flash of lightning. 
As usual, they were watching TV in the dim living room. Around nine, his mom told him to head to bed. He left the living room and walked into the family room, which was almost completely dark, except for the faint glow from the TV in the other room and a bit of moonlight streaming through the sliding glass door. That's when he felt it, an unsettling feeling, like something was wrong. Deep down, he knew it. He glanced to his right, and through the darkness, he saw it. A large Rottweiler sitting about a foot away from the sliding glass, staring directly at him. A chill ran down his spine. He tried to brush off his fear, telling himself it was just a dog. Trying to stay calm, Jack walked across the room, guided by the faint light. He noticed the latch on the door was unlocked. He reached out and locked it. The dog hadn't moved. It just sat there, watching him intently. After securing the door, Jack looked at the Rottweiler, and in a shaky voice said, Can't get in now, can you? To his horror, the dog finally broke its gaze to look at the handle, then back at him. Slowly, the latch unlocked itself, and the door began to slide open inch by inch as if taunting him. Then, the dog spoke in a deep, guttural voice, Nothing can keep me out. Its mouth twisted into a disturbing smile, and its eyes began to glow dull, ominous red. It started muttering in a strange, harsh language that Jack couldn't understand, but somehow he could feel the words, dark, chilling, and ancient. Frozen in place, he couldn't move. He couldn't even scream. He shut his eyes, bracing for whatever would come next. After a few agonizing moments, he opened his eyes again. He was no longer standing at the glass door, but lying in bed, staring up at the ceiling. His whole body was paralyzed with terror, and he lay there, motionless, unsure of how much time had passed. Eventually, he was able to get up, his heart still racing. Gathering his courage, he walked out back into the living room, where his mom was still sitting in the dark, watching TV, completely unaware of what just happened. He had to cross the family room to get there, and as he did, he glanced outside, half expecting to see the Rottweiler waiting for him, but there was nothing out there. No paw prints or wet marks where it had been sitting. However, the door latch was unlocked, the door slightly ajar, not by more than an inch, but still enough to be concerning. Like I said, Jack had experienced strange and eerie things before, but this one stayed with him. No matter how hard he tried to dismiss it as just a nightmare, he knew deep down that it had been real, or at least it felt real, and that memory never left him. I told you that was going to be an odd story. We could chalk that up as a nightmare, sure, but he didn't remember going to bed, only opening his eyes there an instant after closing them. You may have heard of Skinwalkers. That's what comes to mind for me when I hear this story. A skinwalker is a man or woman that possesses magical knowledge said to be pure evil. They can take the form of any animal by wearing its skin. If a skinwalker was hanging around Jack's area, it may even explain the other strange occurrences he'd alluded to. If only we knew that language it started speaking, we may know for sure. Let me know if you have any ideas and check out this video next. It's an interesting one. Make sure you subscribe to catch all the new stories, and I can't wait to see you there. Thanks for joining me for another Midnight Brew.